and we are live. Welcome to the Turaco Creative Cast, where you can't spell Turaco without A R T. I am uh, Frank Salazar, uh, aka Captain Goggles, and uh, we have a very special guest uh, today, Corey Kern. We'll talk a little bit more about him uh, with him, and uh, just, uh, just do a quick little. Our check is just uh, what we're doing uh, right now. I am just going over a Captain Courage uh, model sheet. So I'm going to be working on some more Captain Courage stories. And uh, that's pretty much what I, I did today. So I'll be doing a little bit, uh, a little bit of that uh, tonight. And uh, Anna, i throw it over to you. Hi, I'm Anna, AKA Mask Woman, co-host of the Trucker Creative Cast. And today we do have a very special guest, Corey Kerr. And let's see if I can actually, yeah. Hey, you're playing the right way. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really exciting to have him today. Um, we're going to be talking a little about animation, art, creative stuff. And Frank started right there with a, an art check. Was it a 48-hour art check? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, uh, Corey Kerr is the uh, Swiss Army knife of creativity. He does a whole bunch of stuff, so we'll just go over a few, a few of that. And uh, oh, we have someone in the chats. Hey, hey. it's Emily. Yeah, she yeah, also so... has a forty-eight hour art check. So. Yeah, Emily does an art check with uh, with a couple other people. So. Yeah, it's fun. I just got notified that we are live. Me too. Right in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, should I introduce myself? I'm I'm Corey Kerr, and I feel bad that I don't have an alter ego. I'm I'm not, I'm not a captain of anything. Uh, but yeah. So, so that's me. Yeah. So, what do you guys want to What do you guys want to talk about? How do you How do you kick this off? Do you start with an art check, or do you just uh, just jump in? We do a quick little art check just to see what we're doing. That's pretty much just what uh, what I did right now. And then we'll just usually uh, go in with, with the guest. Uh, uh, you know, since uh, uh, you know we've, we've mentioned the art check, that, that, that is how I know Corey from the 48-hour art check that he does with Joshua Kimball and, uh, and with um, uh, Scott Circling on Monday nights. Uh, so, like, uh, so this show, like, you know, came from that and also from the art cast and art caster. So it's like a combination uh, of, of all that. So we just kind of like uh, combined it and did our, our own little thing. All of the above. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's the best way to do it. Yeah. The uh, the 48 hour art check kind of came out of the art casters too. Um, Josh and Scott had me on that show a couple times. Um, because Josh Scott and Kevin had noticed that I was doing the 100 Days of Animation. I decided that I wanted to learn my learn how to do animation. So I did. Uh, I took on uh, Kevin Cross's challenge and changed it a little bit. So I taught myself how to use After Effects in 100 Days. And I think I've got like 90-something videos, most of them wow. of me being very frustrated, uh, not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, but at the end of that, I, I knew it pretty well. So, uh, but while I was doing that, um, Scott and Josh and Kevin were like, hey, I like what that guy's doing. So they had me on a couple times and then uh, Josh and I decided we wanted to start another show, uh, which turned into the 48 hour art check, which we've done 277 episodes now. So. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So, I remember, I think, I think it was uh, the 200th one where. Um, I was, I mean, I, I popped in, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, also Kayla and, and Jim, Jim Duhan, so. Yeah. So and were you on, a, that was a fun. did you do the sticker stint with us? I, I was going to, like I had said, uh, I was, I was going to do it, but, uh, I ended up not doing it, uh, just cause I think at that time. Like I was doing different projects, so I was like, uh, like yeah. so jumping into another one was gonna like 
you know, burn me out. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah. I'll hold off on that. Yeah, because we also I also had a group of people that did that on, and I know Victor came on. I couldn't remember exactly who who had done that. Gumanelli was there, I think. I can't remember if she was on the show or not, but I know she's done similar things. But but yeah, so. But yeah, it's been good, Frank. You've been around for been around for a while. You're always jumping in the comments, and mm -hmm. uh, I throw I throw your stuff up a lot because <laughs> you're always you're always uh, always saying funny things that are related to what we're talking about. So it's kind of cool. But oh yeah, yeah. I, I try to be uh, involved and active as as, as I can. He's all over the yeah. place. Starting to wonder if he has clones. Right? Yeah, he keeps showing up on all these different shows and stuff. It's awesome. So, yeah, so um, uh, I, I don't know what to say about my art check about what, uh, what I've been doing recently because I've been doing all kinds of different things recently. But I guess the most recent thing um, is that I rigged um, a character for the um, – the animation that Jim Lujan and I are working on together. Um, and that's another show that I do called Breaking the Chains, where we talk about, we just collaborate live. So we don't have any meetings that aren't live broadcast. Uh, and so our kind of idea was to, was to show everybody, you know, what it's like um, to collaborate with somebody. Uh, and so that was, that was kind of interesting. I'm just pulling that up. So I can show this. Um, and I I think you have to put that up, one of you guys, whoever's hosting. It won't let me do it. I'm hosting, but I'm not able to. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, to show stuff. That's fine. But it's, um, yeah, so anyway, so I just have, I'm just, I rigged a character ripping his shirt off. That's. The most recent thing that I did, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll go over that on on the next time we do breaking the chains. And it looks great, guys. Too bad you can't see it though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not used to running these shows. I'm used to I'm used to being able to uh, to push all these buttons, but the like the guest <laughs> the guest view is is very sparse compared to the host view. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. well, oh yeah. So you said that's okay. about uh, kind of showing in real time what collaborating is like. Could you tell us a little bit about collaborating as a, an animator? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, animation, you can do it by yourself, um, but it takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a lot of animation is, is collaboration based. Um, and I've done stuff, I think I've done four, four now, I think four or five um, little shorts or animations or things um, that have been collaborations. Um, so this most recent one, Jim Lujan, who's kind of an indie animator that's been around forever. And mm -hmm. uh, he, he knows, he seems to know everybody in animation. Uh, he's got all kinds of hookups and stuff. He said, he, he called me one day and said, Hey, we should, uh, we should make something to pitch to the studios. Cause he got on, he got on um, Amazon Prime. You can go on Amazon Prime and you can and you can watch uh, a, a bunch of his cartoons. And so he's he's got two different shows that are streaming on Amazon Prime right now. Ooh. And he said, you know, I, I I know all these people and I've never really pitched anybody anything. He said, so let's make something, um, you know, and we can both own it, and and we'll kind of you know both be executive producers, but we'll just collaborate and uh, and do that. And so. The agreement's been different each time. This most recent one is he does the story and the assets. And so he's doing all the illustrations and then I'm rigging them and, and making a move. And recently um, I kind of roped him into doing the lip sync because I think lip sync is like the worst thing in the world to, <laughs> to do. And so, um, so anyway, we're just kind of, we're just kind of playing it by ear, but um, we've got most of the scenes, blocked and rigged at this point. And it's uh, really, we're just using like Google Drive. We just have a shared Google Drive folder and he'll illustrate stuff on Procreate and export it as a PSD. And then I, I download it off of the drive and 
um, bring it into After Effects and rig it. Um, I usually use like uh, joysticks and sliders and rubber hose. Mm -hmm. um, and then I export, I export those scenes, upload them back to the Google Drive, and then he's cutting all the audio. So he's got a bunch of voice, voice talent. Um, and we did one episode where he was coaching my wife, who's an actress, through uh, her lines. So you can see how he does that. And then he'll cut it up and put the, put the music to it. So he's working on an animatic right now with all of the dialogue so that we can get like the timing of everything down and the shot selection and stuff like that. And so I've rendered about probably 20, 30% of the scenes. Um, I've rigged probably 60 or 70% of them. Um, mm -hmm. So we're pretty close. I think we're, we're planning on finishing it mid to late February. And uh, so that's, oh, wow. that's that. Um, Scott Circlin one time had a client come to him and say, hey, do you want to design this character and animate it? And he said, I'll design it if you let me hire this other guy to animate it. And so he designed this, uh, this character for a client um, and I got to animate it. And that was a really fun project. Oh, that's so um, cool. Yeah, Joshua Kimball did one where somebody reached out to him uh, that was working on a documentary and said, hey, we'd like some animated illustrations in between scenes, kind of like transitions from one documentary scene to another documentary scene. And so Josh asked me if I wanted to jump in on that. And so um, did that one as well. And so, uh, yeah, there's been a few of those. So I don't know. It's I don't know what it's like other than you just kind of have to be really honest with your expectations um, of who's doing what, because um, it'll get it gets really frustrating really quickly if you're the type of person who, like in school, like was just like, oh, I'll just do the group project by myself, and you guys can just get whatever grade I get, which is kind of what I was, but I've learned to set boundaries now and to be more clear <laughs> so that I'm not doing all of the work. And it's, it's great. As long as, as long as everybody understands what's what, and I think you can't get into a project with um, in a collaboration situation, unless the other person has the same level of commitment that you do. Um, and so I kind of, I'm very careful with who I agree to collaborate with because if you get in, if you get into a, a partnership with somebody like that, and they're they're slow, or they don't respond for weeks on end, or they drop in the middle of it, or something else happens, um, it's a huge waste. So I really only collaborate with people that I really trust and that are known finishers. You know, people that I've seen finish projects over and over and over again, because nothing is worse than spending a couple months of your life and then the other person quits or, or, or doesn't get you something or whatever. And that's happened to me uh, a couple times and it's, it's frustrating. You know, I had, I had a partner on this other thing that I'm doing. Um, and I did one, I did one where, and this was uh, put your heart into it. That's the short where I had a. Right. I enjoyed watching that one. Oh, did you see that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little depressing. Um, it's like relatable. Yeah. Yeah. It's relatable, but that's up on my website. If anybody wants to watch it, I couldn't show it for a long time, but I collaborated with somebody on the music for that one and they did a great job, Joseph Eber Eberall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was awesome. And so then I thought I would collaborate in the music again. And I tried to collaborate in the music with somebody else and they just took months and months and months and they never got me anything. They always had excuses and there was always something going on that they couldn't and i was like ah so the most recent episode of endo exo uh which is my big project that i'm working on right now um it was like three months later than it needed to be because i was done with it and then i was just waiting on the sound guy man i know it was really frustrating so then i i finally just had that awkward conversation hey this isn't working out and and so I did it myself in like three hours. Um, I put the sound together and had it ready to go the next day. So that was really annoying. And this is why you were the Swiss Army knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't compose music. That's uh, that's the 
<laughs> that's a huge blind spot of mine. But I can, I can uh, go and purchase music and cut it up, and you know, you know, I can, I can edit audio. I just can't. I, I have no musical talent. Uh, um, Judd is yeah, asking have, a question. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm just putting up right now. Uh, Jed Goswick is asking, can you explain what goes into rigging for an animation? Is that setting up figures so that they move correctly? Um, yeah. So that's exactly what it is. So um, it depends on how you're doing it. But if you use if you use a structure like Duick or rubber hose, um, what you're doing is you're you're taking pieces of illustration and you're putting it on top of like a skeleton. Um, and so it's like my skin. My skin and my muscles they 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 go wherever my bone goes, right? If my if my bone goes this way, my, the rest of it goes that way, and so that's kind of like like a skeletal rig. Um, then the other type of rigging that I've been doing a lot lately is you take a bunch of keyframes um, and you can make them do whatever you want. They can do anything. Um, it, you can you can do shape tweens where where shapes are changing. Um, you can do rotation, scale, opacity, anything, anything that can be keyframed. And then you rig that or link that to a controller. It's like a little joystick. So it's a little box. Mm -hmm. If I could share my screen, I could show you, but it's a little box. And inside of that box is a dot. And if you move the box to the right or the left or up or down, it just gives you some percentage of those keyframes that you first did. And so you can have all kinds of different layers and all kinds of different things linked to a controller. Um, and so that's how I'll rig like a face or something. So I have like the upper eyelid rigged to a controller. I'll have the right eyebrow rigged to a controller, the left eyebrow and the mouth. And, and so then I can go in and I can do facial expressions and I can kind of move things around and they can warp and distort and rotate and, and all kinds of stuff. So, so yeah, rigging, rigging is basically just, it's not the animation, but it's, it's getting it ready to move. So it's not making the asset and it's not animating the asset. It's in between those where you take the asset okay. and get it ready to kind of move. So that's, that's the rigging of that. And, uh, and you did uh, uh, videos like uh, doing tutorials of that, right? Like yeah. Yeah. So if anybody wants to see uh, any of that, if you want to learn what I know, I, anytime I figure something out, I, I do a tutorial video of it. So um, I have a series called AI to AE, um, which is taking what I know about Adobe Illustrator and transitioning it to Adobe After Effects. And so if you want to learn animation, uh, you can go look that up. And if you go to, um, you go to coreycurr.com slash videos, um, that has all of the different series that I've made. And so that'll have like my vector graphics playlist if you want to learn Illustrator. And that has AI to AE if you want to learn After Effects. And then it has a bunch of other stuff that I've done, but, but yeah. So I make tutorials anytime, anytime I figure something out because I have a bad memory. Um, so like, uh, I will be like, I wait. I used to know how to do this, and I'll just go back on my own YouTube channel and I'll like watch myself teach my remind myself how to do it. So yeah. it's kind of kind of weird. But, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Gomenelli says the music and sounds and put your heart to it was a chef's kiss. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Joseph did awesome. And that was the first time that I did, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Foley. The fo Foley? Uh, yeah. So I I went to the grocery store. This is back when you could just leave your house, you know. Uh, <laughs> I went to the grocery store and I bought a bunch of produce <laughs> and uh, and different supplies and things. And I recorded myself like, like doing weird stuff to this fruit, like squishing it and ripping it and crunching it. And, and so there's a scene in that where the character reaches into his chest and pulls out his heart. Right? That's it's metaphor, but you see it happen. And so it was really gross. But I went in there and I had like, I had like a big, a big like citrus, and I was like punching it, and I was squishing my fist around in it, and I took like a bell pepper and twisted it and you get that kind of hollow cracking sound. It sounds like breaking ribs. Um, oh, anyway, that's a fun video to watch. I think that's one of my favorite videos that I've done. One of my favorite tutorials, at least, is just me doing the uh, <laughs> me doing the Foley for that. Um, so the sound was really fun on that one. Sound is a huge part of animation. If you watch something 
and then watch it again with the sound off, you'll notice that a lot of the visuals aren't actually there that you thought were there. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is the sound making you imagine that you're seeing something that didn't happen. So you can sell a lot in animation with good good audio. Yeah, it's Ooh. really fascinating. Yeah, that's yeah. something I've noticed in uh, watching uh, Jim's uh, movies. He had just finished the uh, uh, Lars Lazarus, and he was doing uh, videos on Instagram uh, live where he's like going over the audio and, and showing how he, he uh, animates and stuff like that. So hearing like. Uh, some of the audio and how he cuts it and how he adds it, like, and uh, like it's, it's it's a fun process to watch and like you can tell like a lot of uh, like uh, a lot of work goes into it and also like it's uh, like any little sound like makes makes a difference like if one sound is just out of sync it throws off the the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of creative problem solving goes into it. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, it's interesting because uh, you have to kind of imagine what the sound will sound like when you're looking at a specific thing. Because mm -hmm. things sound different when you're looking at different visuals. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so you can really, like, it's, it's you know, like, it's difficult to, to kind of get out of this mindset, at least for me, of, like, things sound like exactly what they sound like. When, but when in actuality, you can, like, you can make anything sound like anything. Uh, if you're just if you're just creative enough, and so, you know, I mean, like I had like footsteps um, in one of my things, and it was just I took two pieces of celery, you know how they bunch up on one end, and and I just kind of just slapped the celery together, and it just sounded it just sounded like little footsteps in a hallway, you know, stuff like that, or like um, you know, bird wings flapping, and I just like have like pieces of leather that I hit it on my hand for like the winds beating, the wings beating and stuff. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, and Jim has, I mean, that guy's incredible. Like he, he puts out, if you look up Jim Lujan on Spotify, he has like millions of fake bands that he's created. Um, and he just writes these weird songs that go, <laughs> that goes, go with his weird uh, animations. And, but all the music in his stuff is, is his and it's all it's all songs that he's written um and all, he wow. does all the sounds and all the audio and he does a lot of the voices too um which is kind of yeah. kind of fun to watch as well but but yeah and uh, so. peter says the magical movies is everything that goes into making them and yeah that's right i agree mm -hmm. yeah and the and the hope is that nobody notices any of it you know if it's if it stands out too much then you know, it's uh, it kind of takes away from the from the storytelling experience, but but yeah, for the most part, it's uh, a lot of that stuff. It's like typography. You know, if you think about the typography, yeah. it's probably not good typography. But if it's invisible and you're able to just experience it, then it's it's done pretty well. So right. Oh, cool. Yeah. Good way to put it. And uh, go ahead, Anna. Oh, I was just saying that it was a good way to put it. Uh, the other thing that I was I was oh, okay. thinking about in my head of saying um, was, do you have a tutorial video where you're taking all of these odd things from around the house and trying to make sound with them? Uh, I do. I do have. I don't have a tutorial video as much as I have a behind the scenes video um, cool. of that. And so I do have. I do have a fully video, but it's just kind of like a super cut of just me squishing fruit and smashing bell peppers yeah. dropping change in a jar and like i have a bunch of stuff around me that i use as well but i haven't i've learned a bunch of other stuff like i've got this this is like one of my favorite things i just got it at ikea and you can fill it with almost anything and it makes all kinds of all kinds of different noises um based on like what you do with it and what's inside of it anyway so i haven't done like an updated version most of it's uh i did that when did i do that short put your heart into it, it was probably over a year ago now um and so i've been doing some newer stuff lately that i haven't i haven't done a video on but um but yeah the older one i've got i've got a, a video on making fully out of produce basically so just the, the grocery store spent about spent about 12 bucks and 
get all the sounds you need to gross yeah. people out. <laughs> this whole montage of these different sounds, maybe even in order for the animation. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool. I did try to I did try to show like a picture in picture of like the scene that you're watching while I'm making the sound. Um, yeah, I mean, it's only two and a half minutes long. It'd be fun to do it all. But like I layered it. I didn't do it live, right? I recorded all those sounds and then I layered them in and edited them in after the fact. Like a real Foley artist, they, they'll they like watch the show and they'll do this. They'll do the sounds as they're as they're watching the show. At least that's how they used to do it for TV. For movies, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but I edited it afterwards because because I'm only one person and it's really hard to do a lot of that yeah. stuff by yourself. So cool. And uh, you mentioned this the sticker stint, or uh, so. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, I was in kind of a I was in kind of a slump. I was getting burnt out on a longer project. Um, and I decided I need, I needed, um, I'm constantly like trying to, uh, hack myself, you know, like trying to figure out like how to optimize things and how to stay motivated and how to be more efficient and be more creative and stuff. And so, um, I was reading, I was reading a couple books on creativity and motivation and, um, the, uh, one of the things that helps keep you motivated is small successes right and so if you do something and then um you you complete that thing and feel good about it then like your brain is like hey do more of it yeah the war of art phenomenal phenomenal book um the war of art uh daniel pink talks about it a lot um there's another one called what did i just read recently um the confidence gap um, is kind of like the workbook for the War of Art, I would call it. They're, they're not related, but it feels like the War of Art is like high-level philosophy about motivation and art and why you should do stuff and resistance and things like that. And then the confidence gap is like, here's like the actual things that you should do. It's a lot about mindfulness and stuff like that. But anyway, so I was reading all this stuff and, and I decided that like going like six months without completing something because it was a six month project. Um, it was hard. And so, I, cause I did a, I did a, um, a 40 page children's book It was hand inked, um, with, with brush and nib. Um, and, uh, and I wrote it and everything. It was great. It was fun, but it was like six months is a long time to not to work on something for two to five hours a day and, and not complete it. Um, and so I got to the end of that and I completed it and I was just like, I just need a bunch of, a bunch of wins. I just proved that I can do something for six months, but now I want to prove that I can do a lot of things in a month. And so I did the inverse of that. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to design a new sticker every day for 30 days straight. And I called it the sticker stint. Like a stint is like a short period of time where you do something hard. Um, you know, I did a stint in prison or whatever, that type of thing. So I was going to do the sticker stint where I just did that. And it was great. A lot of a lot of the designs that I sell in my store are based off of stuff I made during that time. Um, and I've done two more kind of mini sticker sets since then, where I did 14 days instead of 30 days. Um, and it's fun. It's a good way to get um, a good way to get a lot of good ideas because if you require your brain to deliver creativity, it will. Um, but if you just want it to um it won't so if i just sit there and i say oh, i wish i was creative that's way different than i need to come up with and execute an idea every day yeah. uh, mm -hmm. by day seven or eight your your brain is like this is still happening this guy is still demanding that i be creative and so you start to see inspiration everywhere you start to i mean i i was during the sticker stint i was like you know, a lock on somebody's bike would catch my eye and it would spawn an idea or you're walking around the store or whatever, you know, and, and you guys will know this from working on mm -hmm. comics and stuff, like anything you're working mm -hmm. on, the world becomes your inspiration. If you, if you start paying attention, oh, yeah. you start to see how, know. you know, that bush does something that you want to copy or whatever. So, yeah, so that was a sticker stand and I, and the, 
I, the first time around, I announced it and I wanted a bunch of people to do it with me. And I had half a dozen people that said that they would do it and none of them made it. Um, and the second time I did it, um, there's about six or seven people that, that made it all the way through with me. Um, and it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So, yeah, so that was the sticker stamp. I remember uh, Kayla was doing it. Uh, I think when I started watching her, she was in the middle of doing it. And that's when I learned about it. And you had mentioned it. So I was like, oh, that's something I want to try, but I never, never tried it. That yeah. sounds like a future too. Yeah, it's if you're if you're doing any print on demand stuff in in your store, it's a great way to get a bunch of designs done for because I mean you design a sticker, yeah. it'll also work on a mug and a notebook and a t-shirt and a patch and mm-hmm. whatever else. And so it's a really good way to get a bunch of a bunch of designs. Not all not all thirty of them are going to be good, um, but a lot of them will be good. You know, right? And it's, it's better than most people where you know you feel productive if you make one thing a week. Um, you know, try making seven things a week for, you know, for four weeks. That's, that's a big difference. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and you and, get fast. Uh, too. And speaking of a uh, Teespring, we have a Teespring for the Truggle Creative Cast, and there is a link in our link tree. So if you want to get a mug with uh, our logo that Anna Rob uh, made, uh, you can uh, buy that there. You can also buy a shirt that says make comics, not excuse which I came up with that design. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I need to put this up. And that was my shameless self <laughs> Yes. Yeah, whole banner. Just <laughs> yeah, and Gaminelli in the chat, she said she got some good stickers uh, in her store because of the sticker stint. And uh, if if you guys haven't checked out her stuff, go check it out. She's awesome. Excellent. Yeah, I, I love. Yeah, your I stuff. see your stuff on on uh, Instagram all the time. Yeah, she's great and she's super fast. Um, funny story about her, I can't take credit for where she is now because she just like took off, but I can take credit for her starting because I used to pester her all the time. You got to do stuff. You got to do stuff. And she would kind of do stuff and then kind of not. I'm like, no, you got to do it. You got to do it. Anyway, she finally got excited about it, and she just hasn't stopped. It's been awesome to watch. She took off. She got good really fast, too. She got really good really quick, which is cool. Cool to watch. So. But yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I can keep talking about projects, or we can talk about whatever you want, but I'm well, let's, uh, just talking about myself. There, I'm used to it. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there a topic uh, you would like to uh, talk about? We can talk about anything. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you guys What do you guys want to You guys want to talk about? I I can talk about anything. I mean, I uh, I have trouble keeping these live streams. So I do a lot of live streaming. Um, that was, that's kind of another project that is one of those behind the scenes things. Um, but I do a lot of live streaming, and I um, I have trouble. Um, keeping things to like less than like an hour or two. So, so I'm, I'm good with any topic, but, but it's hard for me to come up with, with a topic on the spot, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if anybody in the chats has any questions or anything. Um, I'm happy to go over whatever. Go. I have one. I written we got. Here. Oh, yeah. Good. We were talking about the hundred days of animation that you were doing earlier. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Mm-hmm. That is cool. I have no idea how you just did that. <laughs> oh, there's a butterfly that's going to show up now. There we go. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> Sorry. Fancy. So fancy. And on the note of animation, uh, I was going to kind of ask, kinda, I was going to ask, what got you into animation? Because it's, clear that you've gone that direction and you have some background in other art did Mm -hmm. you like go to art school or were you self-taught what kind of journey led you to where you're at oh man i'll give you the cliff notes version because i'm really old so it's been a long journey um but uh so 20 years ago i took a class that it was a 100 level design class. It was just an introduction to uh, it's just an introduction to the design principles, 
and you spent like two weeks in Photoshop and two weeks in Illustrator and two weeks in InDesign and, you know, and then the class is over. Um, and so that's where I started. And uh, I actually got, um, I got a job based on that. Um, and so oh. I started working in video and uh, I was doing like B2B stuff, stuff that nobody sees, except for like, if you're watching the training, like I did a, did a video on how to defuel and, and uh, an F-14 on an aircraft carrier, you know, it's like the training video on how to do that or whatever. I'm sure it was super boring, but anyway, so I'm doing that. And every once in a while, somebody would say, Hey, could, could you make my logo move? And I was always the type of person that was like, if, if some human on the earth can do it, then that means that I can do it. You know, like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. the same species as them. So I can, the only difference between them and me is they know how to do it. And I have yet to figure it out. And so I would always say yes to stuff like that. Um, so it'd be like, uh, you'd have like, um, I remember one, the first time that this happened, somebody said, and this is, this will date me, but DVDs were new. And, um, and I was working for a company that, you know, they were marketing like, Hey, we can, we can put your stuff on DVD, you know, and, uh, Hey, sketchy harsh. How's it going? And, um, and so, uh, my boss came to me and said, Hey, nobody in the company knows how to do this, but, um, we need to design a menu for this DVD. And I want like transitions from one scene to the next. So that when you click on a button, like it does something instead of just jump cutting to the next thing. And so I said, yeah, I'll do that. And, uh, so I spent about two, day, two days teaching myself how to do that. That's probably the first animation I've ever done. Um, and it looks terrible, you know, but I mean, back in the day, if something's new, uh, you know, people are really excited with the newness of it. So there's little slides, things sliding on and off. Um, and then I really didn't do anything with animation for the next, I don't know, 16 to 18 years. Um, but I had a, I had a, I decided early on when I was about 23, I decided that I would always spend a significant portion of my free time doing something that I wasn't required to do. Um, and so if I was required by school or work to do stuff, then I also wanted to be doing something in addition to that. So I taught myself how to, how to do videography and edit. Um, I taught myself how to do um, motion graphics. Then I taught myself photography. Um, I mean, I had that one class in, in graphic design um, and I, I started designing t-shirts in Adobe Illustrator um, and they were horrible. I still can't get them off the internet. They're out there somewhere. I won't tell you where they are, but they, they still exist and I can't take them down. Um, but they're so bad. I was so bad at it for so long. Um, but I did, I did dozens of t-shirt designs um, and I'd spend just hours and hours and hours trying to figure out how to do it. Um, and so on and on and on. And then, and then I started actually getting good enough to be professional in a lot of those areas. And so because I could do video and photography and editing and audio editing and capture and um, design, and I would get jobs where at smaller companies where they needed like a media guy, you know, they needed, they, they couldn't, they couldn't afford a photographer for 40 hours a week, but they could afford a guy who did photography and design and video and this and that and that. And I had kind of a business background. Um, and so long story short, I did that. And then I started doing marketing direction and art direction where I, I was managing teams of people that did those things. Mm -hmm. um, and one day I decided, you know, I want to learn how to draw. Um, so when I was 32, um, I decided that I wanted to, to take up illustration. Um, and mm -hmm. so when, when I learn stuff, I, I say, okay, I'm going to pick a project that forces me to do that thing over and over and over again. And so I tried to find something that would make me draw as much as possible. And so I started a web comic because this was 2012 in the golden age of web comics. Golden age. Yeah. All the, all, I mean, this is when, uh, I can't even remember the names of them now. Ink something. I mean, there's all these, all these like webcomic places and everybody had their own WordPress with the, the easel um, plugin that turns it into a, like a webcomic thing. And there was, there was like 
this ad sharing revenue, like you could actually make money off of your comic. I made decent money off of it, even though I didn't have that many viewers. So I started this comic um, and I did, uh, I did 60 pages in about 18 months. Um, and that was, that was pencils, inks, colors, lettering, like all that. Um, and it was pretty intense. I did, I, I, it was about a page a week, roughly. Um, I was featured on, uh, that, that ax cop, Ethan McCall. I don't know oh, if you, yeah. Um, yeah. So I did, a, I did a guest episode of ax cop. Uh, he hated it. <laughs> <laughs> And said, "Yes, Kerr had a webcomic. You'll be hard pressed to find it because I took it down. Um, I got a lot better. I had to. So, in the middle of that webcomic, um, in the middle of that webcomic, a buddy of mine that teaches at the university that I teach at now, uh, he said, "Hey, you should apply for this job." I said, "Okay." So I applied for the job, and then I got the job, and then. They said, hey, um, if you want to keep this job, this is after I got the job. If you want to keep this job, you have to get a master's degree. And so this is 12 years after I graduated and I've been working in the industry for 12 years. Um, and so that was the first, uh, the first training I got in illustration or graphic design was a master's level program. So I went from a 100 level class uh, to 700 level classes <laughs> it's kind of skipped all that yeah. But, um but yeah i got in it was great uh i got a i got a degree from scad uh, savannah college of art and design um in in uh, illustration design so it's kind of in the intersection of graphic design and illustration and it was mm -hmm. kind of funny because all of my professors said the same thing all of my design teachers said you know the problem with you is that you think like an illustrator and all of my illustrator illustration professors said, you know, your problem is you think like a designer. Like they didn't like each other that much, and they felt like I was the other one. Whichever whichever room I was in, I wasn't I wasn't in the right room. Uh, so so I don't know. Anyway, but then after that, um, so I did the first two chapters of the mixed, which is my webcomic, and uh, after that I came back and I had. I had leveled up so much that I was like, I, I either need to start that over um, and redo it from scratch or because I couldn't just continue it. It would be, it was, it was too much of a difference. Um, and, uh, oh, Keith Harper. Um, hey. Hey, it, it, was too much, it was too much of a difference to do, um, to just jump into the beginning of chapter three. And so, I just was like, you know, I, I don't want to jump right back in. I'd like to kind of, and so as I was getting out of my master's, which was kind of a, I did it too fast uh, because I, I like to be very productive. And so it was too much. I found my breaking point. My breaking point is two five credit classes um, every 10 weeks while you're working full time with a family. That's about, about 10 months into that is where I was like, I'm broken now. Um <laughs> So, uh, so I finished, I finished my master's in about 14 months. Um, and, um, anyway, after that, I was, I was, I just was a little burnt out. And so I wanted to do something that would be a little bit more relaxing. Um, and I, and I felt like jumping back into the web comic because comic books are so much work. They're like, there's so oh, much. Yeah. Work. So as a, because I'm an insane person, <laughs> As a break from comic books, I decided to teach myself animation, and so that's where I did the that's where I, that's where I did the hundred days of animation. So I spent, yeah, um, so I spent I spent a hundred days um, doing um, a minimum of thirty minutes, but it was usually about three hours. So I, I figure I, I figure I put in roughly two hundred and fifty to three hundred hours in a couple months learning learning animation and uh it was great and the way that i the way that i always do that is the way that i learn anything is the same i i pick a project that's going to force me to learn it and so i wrote a script uh i storyboarded the script i did the animatic and then i started trying to figure it out the first thing that i did is actually this this character i think um let me turn that on 
Yeah. So this guy. Um, this is the first. This is the first character that I did, that I rigged, and what it is. It is a wasp with um, with six legs because it's a wasp, but each leg has um, like two or three different joints. And so, like people always mm -hmm. say that walk cycles are really hard, mm -hmm. uh, and they are. But my first walk cycle that I did was was a six legged creature with with like two two knees on each leg. <laughs> it was like this crazy thing. And I actually, it took me forever and it kept breaking and it was, it was, it was nuts. Um, but then I, so then anyway, later months and months and months after I finished that, I actually learned two or three ways that are significantly easier than what I did. And so I went back and I trashed that rig and, and built a new rig. Now, now it works like really fluidly and I can go in there and make it do whatever I want before it was just, hundreds of keyframes and things were all over the place and yeah. it was a nightmare but now now i've got them rigged up to some controllers so i can make them make them walk and anyway yeah magic i like what me. sketchy says it's a mm -hmm. a magic nice it is man it's awesome i mean you just take something and then you make it move and it really is it really is cool so anyway so that kind of got me to into animation and then after after I did the hundred days of animation, I said, "Yeah, I'd like a I'd like to relax," and that's when I did uh, that forty page hand inked uh, children's book. Um, so that's how I relax is I just switch projects to something unrelated to what I just did. So relax by uh, putting a bunch of dedication into getting a new thing done. Yeah, I um, I was joking I was joking with a friend of mine recently. Um, and it, I, I'm basically self-medicating with creativity. Um, I, I would kind of go nuts if I didn't make stuff. My my wife and I have learned that um, I'm not I'm not right in the head. <laughs> like I'm not. There's something in my mind where I can't. Um, I don't relax well. And so what I what I typically do is it's like if I've got a few days off. That's great. I can play some video games and read some books and watch some TV and hang out. But if I've got a couple of weeks off, I start to get really antsy. I start to crawl the walls and pace and kind of, you know, the first times because I teach now. And so there's like the time in between semesters. And so the first break that we had, like everybody else, I had like two weeks off a year, you know. Um, but the first break that I got, we had we had like all this time off. And uh, about a week and a half into that, uh, my wife sat me down and said, okay, you're driving everybody nuts. Uh, you're not being a nice person right now. So what is going on? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just not doing anything. I just wake up and like, I'm not going to work and I'm not doing, you know, or whatever. So anyway, so long story short, now, uh, whenever there's a break coming up, I mean, I do stuff in the evening anyway, but whenever there's a break coming up, my wife checks in on me. Do you have a project planned? Yeah, I've got a project. Okay. So now I just do a project. You know, I spend a few hours a day doing a project and then I don't, I'm not mean to everybody or whatever. I don't know. But I don't know. It's kind of, it's probably messed up. I'm not sure, but it works. It works for me. So I, yeah, I just, I'm not, I've, I've become one of those people that can't be uh, satisfied not starting and finishing things. The other thing that drives me nuts is not finishing stuff. I hate mm -hmm. unfinished projects i hate them i hate them so much i think about them all the time they drive me crazy i have to kill them or finish them so so, oh, yeah. Yeah. so there's a long long story of how i got here i guess wow cool yeah uh and uh, uh you know we're talking about comics and web comics on this stuff um I think it was like during one of the art checks uh, and I had been like going back and forth. Should I make a comic? Uh, what should it be about? And you gave me some advice. Uh, you were either in the chats or you were on there or, or both, but you said like, uh, just start it, do it and keep doing it. And cause of that, I made my first mini comic, which was the ironing tip and I sent you a copy yeah and uh, I and i still i mean i mean i, I made this one uh, recently but i've been make I, I mean i've been making mini comics comics and 
Okay. I got uh, four stories in uh, combined in these uh, three books. Mm-hmm. Because of that advice, you just uh, make it and keep doing it. So yeah, <laughs> we'll keep busy. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, there's. I, I think people are looking for some kind of secret. Like they're like, people will ask me or talk to my wife or other people, and they're like, "Oh man, I wish I was as as driven as you are. I wish I was as motivated as you are. I wish I was whatever." And it's like do you it. don't you don't need to wish for that. Just do it. You know, like just, just, and, and the biggest thing is, I think that's really a problem is people look too far into the future, you know? And, uh, and it's like, it's like, oh man, you know, I don't know if I could do this 300 page thing or whatever. Well, don't think about the 300 page thing. Like think about the panel that's in front of you, you know, Mm -hmm. like work on it every day. Um, You know, work on it. I've tried all types, all types of different things where, you know, I, I tried to like every three days I wanted to put in a minimum of six hours of work. And so I had this like rolling thing where I could take like a day, a day off every two days if I wanted to, if I put three hours in on the other two days or whatever, I've tried, I've tried doing a minimum of an hour a day. I've tried doing whatever. It, it doesn't matter what, what it is. It's just, it's just do, do what needs to be done today. Do the next, do the next. This is, mm-hmm. I'm about to quote Frozen. I was watching this with my daughter and um, frozen two is it's got the best song in it. It's just do the next right thing. It's such a good song because the message is literally like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know where this is headed. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what I should be doing or what's right or what's wrong or whatever. And there's all these problems and everything. And then, and then she's just like, but I know that I can, I know that I can do this thing that's in front of me and that's it. And the whole song is about just like, I'm going to do that thing. And then when that thing's over, I'm going to look at what the next thing is and we do that thing. And if, if it's a comic, like mm-hmm. start it, write it, you know, mm-hmm. and then, and then pencil and then get your, get your thumbnails now. Just do the next thing. Just do the next thing that needs to be done every day. And then you, you, that's you start I'm doing now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? But I mean, if you were to sit there and say, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this giant, you know, epic thing. It's going to be 500 pages and you'd freak yourself out. You'd totally oh, yeah. freak yourself out. Everybody would. Right. But if you're just like, all right, what can I do about this today? I just need to move the needle a little bit. I just got to get a little bit further down the road and you just do that every day. And it's, it just works. I mean, you know, there's different things along the way that'll get in the way, but yeah, that's, I, f- I forgot that I said that, but I, I believe that strongly. Just, just <laughs> keep moving forward. I'm going to continue oh, yeah. to quote cartoons. You just keep swimming, do the next right thing, you know, all that stuff. It's all, it's all good advice. This episode and, brings you Corey Kerr's backstory and wisdom from Frozen 2. Right. And if you get stressed, let it go. Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so. and, yes, uh, but yeah, it, it's that's good to hear, man. It's exciting to hear when people are like, you know, when you've had some kind of effect. I don't know. It'd be nice. It'd be nice in this world if, when we die, like you don't cease to exist. Like you've had some kind of impact, you know, mm-hmm. in your life. So it's cool to, you know, it's cool to hear that, like, you know, like, hey, I made this thing because you told me a thing. It's like, oh, that's awesome, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not yeah. necessarily life changing or anything, but it's like there's there's a little tiny impact or little little drop in the ocean, you know, that you leave behind. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. And right. out of that somewhere, um, like you telling me, just just do it, start it, and then like people telling me like you know don't don't make excuses, just just do it. And like I came up with, with uh, my motto, which um, it's now on on a T-shirt: make comics not excuses. And and I very much live by it. As like, okay, what can I do today? I'm I'm gonna make comics, or I'm gonna make this. I'm not gonna make. Uh, Oh, well, I can't or this. I mean, if I genuinely can't, I'll hold off, but I'll try to do something. And I, uh, sometimes I do take a little bit of breaks just so I don't like, I'll burn out. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was doing uh, this comic for the uh, Pulp Edition. And I mean, there, there was a, Anna, Anna knows about this, uh, uh, but um, like, I was just having setback after setback after setback. My tablet was you know, almost broke, it glitched, I lost a whole page. And I was like, uh, 
just a few days away from the deadline and like I almost gave myself a heart attack and I had to like you know, step back relax like it's fine <laughs> yeah and then I, I just kind of like you know like I just did the other pages pretty uh, quickly so it's not my best story but I mean it's the one I remember the most because you know I gave myself an anxiety attack doing it yeah <laughs> so, well, it's one, it's one more it's one more finished thing than the person who talks about doing stuff all the time that never does it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and that's the nice thing about personal projects is you you can set your own timeline, you can set your own deadlines, and so if you need to, you know, because that's the other end of it. I feel like all of us that are doing this type of work are walking this tightrope between like falling off the wagon and stopping or pushing so hard that we break ourselves and burn out and, and whatever. So there's like, there's this, there's this line in the middle and you just got, you just got to listen to your body and mm-hmm. you know, take breaks when you need to and not push too hard. Don't sacrifice relationships in your life. And you know, it's balance. It's all about uh, balance. So. Oh, uh, well, I just divorced my wife so I can make comics. Was that wrong? It's not the best idea, but it depends on your wife. Mm. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't nice. I don't know. <laughs> Just yeah, I like my wife, so I would like to not do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing, and and it's I'm constantly on the lookout for how to teach it because I've experienced it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and I think doing an art check is there's something to that because I used to do kind of what you were describing, Frank, I used to do kind of what I call spike and crash mm-hmm. production where you just push really hard for a little bit and then you get exhausted and crash and you don't do anything for a little bit and you push and you, and it's, it's this constant up and down roller coaster of like manic activity and then, you know, depressive, like laziness and, you know, and I could, I could cycle through that once or twice in a week, you know, where it's, I'm just like up and down and all this stuff. And it's, um, and I'm using psychological terms. It's not, it, it wasn't a mental thing. It was just the physicality of like not sleeping for a day and a half, you know, while I was working on the comic page or whatever. And then I, and then I yeah. come home from work and go to bed at like 6 PM and sleep until 7 p- 7 AM or whatever. So it's like that type of thing. And then I, and then I started kind of leveling it out a little bit. Part of it is I probably got older. And and all nighters are just way more painful in your forties than they are in your twenties. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, but there's that. And then I was like, you know, um, we got to figure this out. And that's when Josh and I started the forty eight hour art check. And the nice thing about checking in with somebody every couple of days, whether you do it live or you do it via text or whatever, is uh, you're expected to have progress every couple of days. Mm-hmm. And so there's kind of like, you know, there's a there's an expectation of moving the moving things along a little bit rather than these, these huge things. And then nothing happens for four or five days or a week or whatever. Um, and so having done that now for almost 300 episodes, so I'm, I'm at 277. Mm-hmm. We kind of felt like we both have gotten into the habit of just constant healthy productivity. So it's not so much that it's to the breaking point but it's not so little that you're not moving the needle at all. And so there's kind of a balance there where you just mm-hmm. constantly kind of move the project forward towards a goal. You know, you get a plan that you're working towards and whatnot, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you mentioned you're, you're almost reaching 300 episodes. And I know in the last uh, couple of art checks, you're talking about uh, changing how you do the art check. Cause you've been doing it for, for so long that you like, you know what to do. Like, like we're gonna kill it. No, to not changing it. It's yeah. gonna die. It's gonna die an ignominious death. We're gonna we're gonna hang it up in town square for everybody to see its corpse. Okay. No, we're 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 tired of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Josh and I both kind of came to that conclusion separately at the same time. It's weird when you spend that much time with the co-host you kind of get in sync with each other and we've, we've noticed it and you guys might notice it as well, but you kind of like your ups and downs, you share your ups and downs a little bit. It's, it's, uh-huh. it's pretty weird. 
Um, but we both kind of got sick of the show at about the same time. And I, he kind of, he kind of reached out and said, Hey, I've been thinking about doing this other show. So Josh, Joshua Kemble had like one of the most popular podcasts ever. Like his, his podcast was more popular than NPR and CNN and MSNBC. Like he was beating out major news organizations. Um, so this is years ago. Right. And he said, why, why are we not doing a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I I'm running like four YouTube shows and I need sleep and whatever and anyway he said I'm gonna start I'm gonna I'm I'm not I'm I'm not using all of my skills I'm really good at podcasting um, and so he uh, he pitched this idea of of doing um, in a podcast about creative inspiration and so we're literally it's gonna be a review show you know but we're gonna focus on indie stuff um, there's a lot of people out there that review. Ooh. There's a lot of people out there that review Marvel and DC and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But there's some really good professionally done indie stuff over the years that um, mm -hmm. very few people talk about. So that's that's likely what this sh what we're going to do. Yeah, Peter saying in the chat, big illustration party time is the is the thing that berserker not stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff out there that doesn't get talked about a lot that has affected my work. Like I've gotten better. Yeah. I've changed. I've been inspired. And um, one of the interesting things I think to do is to, if you like somebody, go look at who they follow and go look at who those people follow and go look at what inspired their work. And eventually you're going to end up at cave paintings or something. Right. But I mean, like there's a lot of incredible work out there. Like I follow a guy, um, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy, incredible artist. He does the weirdest things with ink. Um, and then I started looking into who his inspirations were. And that's when I found like Sergio Toppi, who's like right above my head right here, right there. He's an Italian, uh, an Italian illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, his stuff is weird and incredible and everything. And so I started looking at Sergio's um, stuff. And so anyway, so yeah, that's that. Um, Nefarious is asking if we'll be covering uh, Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter projects or just indie stuff in general. Um, we don't have a solid plan yet, but definitely many of the projects I've backed, I've backed a uh, hundred or so Kickstarter projects over the years. Um, and quite a few of those have been very inspiring and have changed the way I've thought about things. And so um, I don't know what it will become um, because I, I, I couldn't have said, you know, a few years ago that the 48 hour art check would become what it became. Um, we were just talking about meeting together live on the air and talking about what we did and it became this whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know where it'll go, but, but we're, we're definitely going to start talking about, um, we're definitely going to start talking about just the books and TV shows and cartoons and movies and oh, wow. uh, radio plays and stuff that kind of inspired us. So and doing reviews. that'll be that'll be interesting now uh, like where you where you go with that because i know with just a 48 hour art check uh like like i was saying this channel you know partly came from that yeah uh, and so it, it'll be interesting to see what your new show inspires other people to do yeah yeah that's that's cool i hope it inspires people to do stuff I mean, I hope at the very least, um, there's two things I hope happens with it. Uh, one is I hope that we drive some more customers to some awesome creatives. Um, and the other thing is, you know, there, there are fans of these niche works out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I'm going to talk about something that they love, they might show up and then discover my work, right? But I almost feel like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just anxious or whatever, but I almost feel like people are really sick of me talking about my stuff. It's, it's really hard to build an audience when the only thing you do is talk about yourself. <laughs> so, so I kind of feel like, you know, instead of just being so Josh and I both came to the same conclusion that, we, you know, we're working on the same projects and we're talking about the same stuff over and over and over again. It's not the most interesting content. So I think, you know, if I were to say, I'm going to talk about a bunch of other stuff, then, you know, I'm adding value to people's lives and maybe, maybe they'll be 
interested in taking a look at some of the stuff that I've made too, but it's not like a 24 seven Corey Kerr sales channel, which is what I feel like the 48 hour art check kind of became. It's just like an hour long plug two or three times a week for, you know, just, just shilling your work, which I got kind of sick mm -hmm. of doing. So. Oh, well, that's kind of what we do here sometimes. Usually it's just me cool, like in my, my coffee account. And, you know, for just a few bucks, you can get some PDF uh, comics. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you send me the minimum of 30 bucks or more, and I'll send you some PDF comics in your email. And I will be sending you the uh, the first mini comic I ever made, the ironing kit, which uh, I got help from Corey Kerr to just push me to do it. So check that out. Yeah, so, that's awesome. So I've, I've kind of, I've embraced it. <laughs> yeah, and I think I, I agree. I don't want to say that, you know, the shameless self plug is bad. I don't want to say that you should not <laughs> plug things. Um, well, in fact, while I'm saying this next part, let me do this. We'll do that. And I'll just move this up a little bit. So right here, so everybody can see it. There we go. We'll just have that. Okay. So I don't think, I don't want people to get the impression that I don't think that you should self-promote. I do think you should self-promote, but I think you should do other things. So I feel like my stuff just became nothing but self-promotion. And it's, oh. it, I just got tired. I got tired of it and I'm the one doing it. And so then I was like, for the viewers, this has got to be horrifically boring. So what I was thinking is like, let's talk about some other stuff and we'll do like a 90-10 thing. It'll be 90% other people's things. And, and that way, you know, we can just get a lot of that good stuff out there. And then, you know, at the beginning end of it, we'll, we'll talk about how it relates to our stuff, you know, because I mean, that's the point is the inspiration, you know, it's like, you know, like I can, I can literally track, you know, a technique that I used in my, in, in my children's book, um, you know, the tongue cut sparrow or a technique that I used in an animation or whatever, two specific things that I read or watched. And, and I think that's going to be more interesting than, you know, than uh, just me saying, yeah, you know, this thing I've been talking about for hundreds of hours. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. well, as long as we're, we're promoting people, because that's something else that I like to do, not just promote myself, but promote others. Uh, Keith Harper finished his uh, comic debut, Rocket Almanac. Uh, and you can get it on Davy Rocket Almanac dot com. And I was one of the first ones to get. I have it here somewhere. I need to look for it. <laughs> but uh, and cool. um, I just got this in the mail. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this guy called Peter Sickler. He's in the uh, the AAA Creators uh, uh, Discord uh, in, in Pierre and he sent me a copy of his comic that he just did, uh, Adam Frankenstein. And like it's like really nice. So that he may look like it's like uh, like newsprint, like it's old old pages, but you know this just came out this year. So it's like it's like really really good stuff, really good art. All the shout outs. Yeah. I'll be another one. There we go. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be one of those. I'm gonna be one of those uh, sections of the show that is just completely covered by ads. <laughs> so, and Judd says, "Indie folks got to hustle." That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, I know something that I know something that I haven't talked about that would be interesting. Um, Endo Exo is is mm -hmm. a cartoon that i'm working on um and in that cartoon um in that cartoon i have other people's work so i've got stickers and posters and and whatever else right on the on the walls and cars and everything and so if you go to let me let me get this uh let me get this right i'll, I'll put this up on the screen yeah, there we go. If you go to if you go to coreycurcom slash endoexo, e n d o x o, e sorry e n d o e x o. Um, if you go to if you go there, then um, you can submit you can submit your art 
to end up in in future episodes of this animation. So I'd love to have. Oh, cool. I have. I've got Gazbots, um, uh, Horror A4 in there. I've got. I've got stickers from, and posters from Mike Emirates and uh, and Cirqueworks and and a lot of those guys. Um, uh, Fat Rocket Studios has got a T-shirt on one of my characters. Um, so what I really like is I'd really like that show to become. Um, I'd like that show to become like a place where people go to learn about new indie artists and creatives and stuff. So, oh, wow. so that would be. I fun. think I'll. I think I'll submit something. I'll submit my uh, make comics and I excuse the shirt. Yeah, man, do it. I'll. Uh, I'll put it on somebody or something. Cool. But, but yeah, so um, want to check that out. Yeah, for sure. I because I would really like that to be like a place where every time I release an episode, people go and watch it, but also a place where they're like, I want to figure out, I want to see who the new who the new artists are. Um, you know, and that type of thing. I'll put that, I'm putting that on the screen right now. Hold on just a sec. We'll go right. There we go. Window XR. <laughs> and the fairy says you're sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. But yeah, well, that's uh that's a little over an hour. Do you guys want to talk about yeah. anything else? Should we call it? Um, yeah, we we went over an hour. I have a couple of key points that I uh took away from your backstory and that's essentially always keep learning try something new and keep trying stuff pick a project and it's never too late to learn something new yeah you can be a super old guy like me and still learn new stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it is interesting i love i love the you know i i i I love that I started something at 32 that I got really good at. Mm -hmm. I actually, when I was 32, and I, if, I don't know, it always feels weird to say I'm really good at something, but I, I think objectively I've, I've got some skill in illustration. Um, but, uh, but when I was 32, I said, I want to, I want to, I want to give this a shot, right? I want to try it. And so I set out to say, I'm going to do this about eight to 20 hours a week mm -hmm. for 10 years. And, uh, and if at the end of 10 years, I'm not any good, then I can honestly say that I gave it a shot and, uh, and move on to, to a different experiment. So I've got two more years left on that, on that thing. So 2023, I'll, I'll, I'll check in with myself and see if that was a wasted 10 years or not. I don't think it is, but, but I think that's a good, I think that's a good way of looking at it is to say, you know, let's. Let's let's instead of instead of I'm gonna try this and if it doesn't work out I'm gonna I'm gonna give up like try it try it for three years or ten years or five years or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sure, definitely. Yeah. All right. So um, I think that's it. I mean, unless you got something else you want to talk about, or if anyone has a question in the chats, uh, Blue T Art is asking and i think this is for anna what is that mask from i have no idea it's, <laughs> it's her own creation yes it's from duct tape and uh that tape stuff that goes on it's stage. from her her mind and, and if it, you want to know why she wears a mask that's because she is mask woman because <laughs> and uh if you want your own paper craft uh just uh drop me some cash in my coffee can and i'll send you this paper craft and there's also a captain goggles paper craft <laughs> so. that's awesome and, i have no mask uh, i feel i feel like i need some masks i've always been obsessed with like luchador mask designs and i don't know why i don't have any i gotta i gotta rectify that situation yeah you gotta fix yeah. that i know well, well, Anna has the mask template on her Gumroad, uh, or is that up yet or not? I'm about to upload it. That's like a tonight so, project. So when she uploads that, you guys can make your own mask. We actually did uh, we did some masks together on a live stream on her channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like last week. Uh, so you can check out Anna Rob. 
Subscribe to Anna Rob, get her to 100 subs because we have a challenge where we can get her to 100 subs. Anna and I will be eating some bugs on this channel on a live stream. <laughs> so if you want to see that, check it out. And uh, all her information is in the uh, links below. And, uh, she has a link tree, so you can check out her stuff there. And uh, let's see. And that says luchadores are cool. Uh, Nefarious is saying, uh, is it really the point on whether you're good at it or not? It's an interesting discussion there. I think yes and no. That's my answer. And what does good mean? Because that's largely objective. It is. It I mean, is. there's technical yeah. skills and all of that, and understanding how to use programs and design. Right, but people can people can know illustrator really well they can mm -hmm. know Adobe illustrator really well um and they can they can understand the principles of design really well and they can still suck really bad like so the technical skills don't they're not they're not at the heart of storytelling they're 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 tools that help the storyteller but they're not at the heart of storytelling right but on. i do think if you if you set out to do something i think you should try to do it as best you possibly can and that, that involves improvement. And that's actually part of motivation. So Daniel, Daniel Pink talks a lot about, um, Daniel Pink talks a lot about like what causes us to be consistently and intrinsically motivated. Um, and one of those things is self mastery. And so if you can, mm -hmm. if you can show improvement, if you can show that like you're better today than you were two weeks ago, you know, you're better today than you were five years ago, um, mm -hmm. that is motivating. And so to, to see like self mastery is, is one of those things. And so a natural result of continuing to be motivated is going to be that you get better. And I do think there should be a purpose to it. This is probably from my business background, <laughs> but like, um, I'm not, I'm not a fine artist and I'm never, I'm probably never going to be in a museum or an art show or anything. Cause I'm just not, I don't fit into that world. Um, but I make things for a reason. And I feel like if you don't make things for a reason, I don't know why you're doing it. So, but on the flip side of that, I got some really bad advice. I listened to some really bad advice when I first started doing comics. Um, somebody who I won't mention because I still like them. I just think this is horrible advice. Uh, Was it Scott? Said, What's that? Was it Scott? No. There's nobody, <laughs> nobody I've ever been on the air with. Um, but they said, uh, they said, don't start your comic until you're a good illustrator, like work really hard to become a good illustrator and then start your comic. I think that is the worst advice you could possibly give. Um, yeah, there you go. People can know stuff and they can still really so bad. So, <laughs> um, but I think, I think you should use projects to get good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So it's a little tough, but I don't think you should let your lack of experience or let your lack of ability stop you from doing things. Because I would never have done any of the things I've done. I sucked at photography when I first started doing it. I had no idea what I was doing with animation when I first started doing it. I couldn't draw anything when I first started my comic. I like I had no clue about any of that stuff. So I was terrible. So if I let my skills and abilities get in the way of my production, I never would have produced anything. But I got significantly better every time I make a new project and I keep continue to do that. I get better each time. Like we all do, you know, I just think project based learning is the, it's the best way to go. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're currently doing the uh, 100 days of making comics uh, challenge. It's Anna's first time. And she, I think you're on like day 33, 38, 38. Okay. I think I'm on day 33. <laughs> I'm somewhere. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, with that, like, I'm, I'm just doing like smaller projects. And like, uh, like, like this mini comic came out of that. I mean, and I'm working on uh, another comic right now. So it's just like, can just like take it a step by step, finishing one, jump on the other one, and uh, mm -hmm. get some uh, cool stuff out of it. And, uh, you know, and put those up on coffee or actually I want to do a Kickstarter or a, a Indiegogo or a Kickstarter uh, 
once I finish some more stories, I uh, put those in a trade or something. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's what we're going to do. Like, uh, just uh, do our stuff and put it out there. <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. That's it. Keith Harper's got it. I was talking about this earlier. Kids learn way better than adults do. They have no fear of failure. They don't care what they're, they don't care if they're good at it or not. They're just excited to do it. Mm hmm and they kind of like brute force attack it. Like I'm watching my two and a half year old learn new words. He uses them all the time and he learns them wrong and he uses them wrong, but he's like, he, he uses them like he'll learn a new word and then he'll use it all the time. And he kind of looks at everybody to see if he's using it right. You know, it's kind of like, it's just a great way to do it. He's not scared of looking foolish. You know, he, he's just, he's just doing it. He doesn't like beat himself up when he uses the word wrong. He's, he's just like, all right, that wasn't the right way to use it and keeps going. Mm -hmm. right. Sounds like, yeah, it's Larry. You got to have that child right. being an artist. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. And I think on that note, I think it's safe to uh, end the show. Uh, we can <laughs> start wrapping up. Yeah. <laughs> Cause if you um, ended it incorrectly, horrible things would happen. But now, yeah. <laughs> okay. Corey, where can we uh, find you? Uh, you can find me at CoreyKerr.com. And if you go to CoreyKerr.com slash online, um, I've got a little page there that has all the different places. So you can look at my animations and my stickers and my YouTube channel and Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. So, yeah, there's all kinds of different places you can find me, but it's all at CoreyKerr.com. Um, but go watch, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll promote since I'm bad at that. Go watch, uh, go watch, put your heart into it or go watch, uh, the episode one of endo XO. Those are both on, on my website for free. So you can go check those animations out. And Anna, where can we find you? On Anna Rob at, uh, yeah, there's a link tree. There's Anna Rob YouTube. There's Anna Rob arts on Instagram. There's actually a blog, which mm -hmm. if you want to see something online that I'm actually regularly trying to keep posting online where other people other than just myself and my family can see my work. There's a blog and I've been doing daily posts for the hundred days of making comics. So yeah, right. you can check that out if you want to. And you can find me on Sada Sada Art Nation on YouTube, Instagram, I'm also somewhere on Facebook. You can, there's my link tree there. You can find all my stuff there. And if you want to get some pretty cool uh, PDF uh, mini comics and some other PDF projects like this uh, Mask Woman Paper Craft, there's also a Captain Goggles Paper Craft. You can just donate to my coffee and I will send those uh, to you. And uh, I don't forget to subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, tell your friends uh, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Anna Rob because we want to get her to 100 subs. And we just want to say thanks to everyone who showed up. Uh, Keith, Nate, Nefarious, Peter Palmiati. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a few other people. Uh, Blue T Art. So uh, thanks, Corey, for uh, for dropping in. I've been wanting to have you on for, for a while. I will actually want to have Josh and Scott uh, on uh, sometime also so I can just have everyone from the uh, art check. <laughs> yeah, man. And, uh, thanks for having me. All right. Fun. No problem. Thank you so and much. You. I, it was great to meet you. Good to meet you, too. All right. And we'll say bye, everyone.